There is a new animal in Creatura, the scorpion. We previously had sea scorpions, but now we have the regular scorpion. We will be starting from scratch from flatworms and making our way there. And so we first need to get slugs and horseshoe crabs. I'm going to make a second family of my flatworms so that I can evolve both of those at the same time. It helps if I have homes for these two groups, we'll separate them, because they will be eating different plants. One of them will be eating these short, complex leaves, and one of them will be eating these short, simple leaves. Now we'll let those plants grow just a little bit, and then I'm going to take some cuttings here, just, just so they have some extra plants to eat. Don't want them to be too limited. But one plant would be enough. I just like to make them have an abundant supply of food. So if we let this run now, we've got our two families of flatworms eating these two different types of plants. Low complex leaves over here on the left. Ooh, I'm going to need to fix this water filter soon. I'll just do that now. And then these low simple leaves over here. So I'm going to fix my water filter. I'm just going to put the first one on. That should do it. Then I'm going to let this run until we have slugs and horseshoe crabs. All right, we have our slugs here, and we have our horseshoe crabs here. At this point, we can get rid of all of the flatworms, and so I'm going to radiate them all away. Now that we have gotten rid of our flatworms, we need the horseshoe crabs to be eating some slugs that will get us to our sea scorpions, but we also need some slugs eating these low, simple leaves. So I'm going to pick up these homes. We're going to reset our homes. And I'm just going to grab one of these leaves in case I need it later. But now I can get rid of these plants. So I'm just going to sell these plants. I don't need them anymore. Uh, let's make sure that none of them are still growing. They are not. OK. So what I need is sort of two separate groups once again. And I need one of my slug families. So I'm going to actually create I'm going to create three slug families. One of them I need over here. I need them to keep eating these low simple leaves to turn into sea snails. Um, I don't quite know if it just goes in order, but let's see. It does not. I think it kind of chooses randomly, but it chose one of my slugs. So I've got this family of slugs over here. They're going to be eating these leaves. I'm really going to try and keep the other ones away from there, though. Now, one thing I can do, I hope this won't mess it up, I'm going to put the other three families over here. Got my other three families all over here because I want my horseshoe crabs to eat these other uh, slugs. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a barrier in between here. So I'm going to lift this up and I'm going to bring the water level down. When you do this, sometimes it switches your homes around. So you just kind of have to be careful or it might make new families of these horseshoe crabs. Let's just go take a look and see what happens. All right, fairly straightforward. It did make a new horseshoe crab family because they were likely over here when I did that. I'm just going to go ahead and radiate them away. I don't need them. Right. So now I'm just going to double check where my homes are. So I've got a slug home over here. You can see it lights up. My horseshoe crabs are over here as well. That lights up. My other slug family is over here. I think these switched sides, actually. And then my last slug family is over on the right. So why did I split these up? Well. If the slugs on the left are eating these low, simple leaves, they could create sea snails as well. I only need that to happen with one of them. And so I've got that over here. On the left side, these other slugs are just food for the horseshoe crabs. And so on the left, we're creating our sea scorpions. It's going to take about three hours or more at maximum time. The last time I did this, it was three and a half hours. Uh, the sea snails should show up a bit faster, though, with our slugs eating the low simple leaves. Once that happens, we're just going to leave the snails alone until we have our sea scorpions, which again takes quite a bit of time. So at this point, I'm just going to let this run until we have sea snails. I'll bring you back for that. 
and then I'm going to have to continue letting it run until I have sea scorpions on the left. You can see sometimes your homes will break. Uh, don't worry too much about that. We'll just let this run. And we have our snails. We have our sea snails. Uh, I tried to fix the homes while I was waiting for this. Uh, they just kept breaking. Again, they don't really matter other than you really do need some slugs eating these low, simple leaves. That's how you're going to get to your snails. Now, at this point, um, I can do quite a bit of changes. Uh, we no longer need any plants. We don't need to actually feed our animals, which is kind of weird, but uh, we don't need them. So I'm going to get rid of them so that the other slugs don't evolve into sea snails. And I'm going to return to just one tank. I'm not going to have it separated by regions. This way, I can actually set up the homes. I think it just breaks when you have these different regions. And that will help me keep my horseshoe crabs near my sea slugs to eat. And so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then at that point, I still I haven't even gotten my next generation of horseshoe crabs. These things live forever. Um, I'm just going to have to keep waiting again. When you do get a new generation of them, radiate off the old ones because they might live too long to, to block the next generation from being born. Um, I don't actually know if that's true. I just find that it's helped me lower the amount of time it takes to get to the sea scorpions. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna make some changes here, and then we'll take a look at the tank. All right, so I got rid of some stuff. If you have extra animals, you can just go in uh, to the Eddie Gene research and just radiate them and they die, off, they die off. So I just like to clean my tank up here. I still have three different families of slugs. So I've got three families of slugs over here with my family of the, uh, the horseshoe crabs. Because I still need the horseshoe crabs to be eating these slugs. So I've grouped them over here on the left. And then my new sea snails that I have here, you can see they're, they're looking beautiful. Uh, I put their family over on the other side of the tank just to just to not tempt those horseshoe crabs from eating them. Um, at this point though, I do just have to wait a few hours on the fastest setting to get my sea scorpions. And so that's coming from my horseshoe crabs over here on the left, eating these slugs here on the left. So once I have sea scorpions, we are basically done and ready to get our regular scorpions. After a long wait, of about seven hours, maybe eight hours, um, we finally have our sea scorpions. Hooray, hooray, sea scorpions. Now, what we need to do is we only need the sea scorpions and the snails. And so I'm gonna remove all of the remaining animals besides them, I'm just gonna radiate them away. And then we want them to be on land as well. In order to evolve to the scorpion, we need to be eating the snails on land, not in the water. So I'm going to get rid of those animals, fix my tank, and then I'll show you what I have. Okay, so I've brought up the land level, and both of these animals can have their homes on the land. So I'm just going to put them both on the land. You don't need to leave any water. I'm just going to leave some there just for the, the sake of it. And now, again, we will just need to wait until enough generations have gone through with the sea scorpions eating the snails. There are some things you can do though to speed this time up. One of the things that I tried to do in the last one, as I noticed it was taking longer than before, was, uh, I'm not gonna show you anymore, but I was bringing my pH down. I was bringing my pH down to make it more acidic. You can do that by buying these very, very cheap uh, pH adjustments here. You can make it go up or down, depending on what you wanted. By making it more acidic, it's supposed to shorten the lifespan of your animals. Um, again, I didn't quite notice much of a difference, but I, I didn't do it at the beginning. So maybe if you do this when you start, that should help you out. There is also, I forget which one of these it is. Uh, this one brings your, the lifespan down by quite a bit. Um, it's a bit expensive. I don't have any money as I'm starting over on a fresh save. So I didn't use that either, but that is a way to speed this process up if you don't just want to leave your tank running. But now, what I am going to do is, I always hit escape, I'm just going to let this run again. Um, perhaps I'll bring it back and show you in Eddie Gene here, or in this, this the science thing, 
uh, if I see the evolution happening, changing in the next couple generations, I'll, I'll bring you back and show you what that looks like so that you can just verify that it is actually working. But for now, I'm just going to let it run. Looks like uh, the sea scorpions will be reproducing quite a bit faster. Only took 45 days to get to this second generation. And we can already see the evolution taking place um, compared to what we had before. We can see a, here we don't have it, but we are seeing a spike or a little you know, stinger being created. You can see it popping up a little bit here on the other ones as well. And then also the front uh, claws are, are moving towards the front. Previously, they are sort of to the sides or going backwards, but now they're moving to the front. And so this is one way you can check just to see if you're on the correct path. So I'm going to continue to wait until we actually have our scorpions. And we have completed our scorpions. Uh, the things you see walking around here, these are actually the sea scorpions um, in their late development because my scorpions that I've got um, they're still very young, so they're still growing. You can see they're growing. Um, they need to grow up a little bit first, but here they are. We've got our scorpions successfully. It was a long process. Um, this is, I think, the highest tier animal. I don't, I'm not sure if it's the same tier as reptiles and insects or not, um, but we have it. The newest animal in Creatura, the scorpion. All right, well, that's it for this guide. Whenever a new animal is added, you can pretty much be guaranteed I'll be making a guide for that at some point. Uh, this did take quite a bit of time. I failed the first time, so I had to restart. Uh, I've, I, I forgot something when I was doing it. And then uh, it just takes a long time for those sea scorpions turning into, or sorry, horseshoe crabs turning into sea scorpions. That's what really takes the long time on this one. If you can speed it up, again, you can use the uh, pH adjustment, you need to adjust the pH before the animal spawns or it won't do anything with that. pH down, make your make your tank very acidic. Uh, or if you've got big bucks, big, big lots of money, um, there's this, uh, I don't know how to pronounce that, but this growth hormone aging catalyzator. Um, anyway, I wish I could have used this, but uh, I don't have the money for it. So I suppose I could have used a cheat code. I think there's one for that. But anyway, that's it. I hope you enjoyed it.